Hi Yogi and welcome to another slow flow class with me Oshana. In today's episode we are heading into our third week of backbending which means this is an intermediate level practice. There'll be a few more challenging options in the mix um, and I'll be giving you less instructions throughout. So if you know you have a hard time catching your foot with your hand behind your back, then you may wish to have a yoga belt, a scarf, or possibly a um, normal trouser belt nearby so that it will help you loop that around the foot um, and make your life a little bit easier. So it's always helpful to remember that with back bends, a lot of it is down to just your physical body proportions that you have no control over. So if you have long arms and legs, usually back bending is a little bit easier than if you have short limbs and a long torso like I do. Um, that's a little bit more challenging. So we do want to make sure that we accommodate for whatever's going on with our body. And we'll be working our way towards Natra Jasana, Lord of the Dance Pose not the Irish one, but the yoga version of that. Um, it's a particularly tricky posture because it sort of combines a standing balancing posture with a back bend. So do be mindful as we move into our peak posture. And if you can, then see if you can think a little bit more about back bending from the part of your spine that is a little bit more you know, immobile and maybe feels a little bit sort of tenser, stickier, um, rather than the part that is very flexible. So for me personally, my upper back, the thoracic spine is a little bit more inflexible and I'll try to really express the back bend here rather than moving from my lower lumbar spine, which is overly flexible. So see if you can do the same thing and that way we start to create a little bit more balance in the whole of the spine. Um, so once you're ready, we'll be starting in a tabletop position in the center of our mat. Once you find your way into tabletop, make sure that your hands are directly underneath the shoulders, the knees are under the hips, and we'll move through a couple of rounds of cat-cow. So Inhale to arch the spine up towards the ceiling. Let the collarbones open to the front into cow pose. As you exhale, round the spine up towards the sky. Take your eyes up towards the belly button and press the floor away in cat pose. Seeing if you can smooth out that transition and match the movement to your own breath cycle. Possibly even noticing any areas where there's tension in the spine. So if there's certain vertebras that only move as a whole group or segment rather than individually, just making a mental note of that so that when we come into our deeper back bends, you focus your attention on expanding the spine from those particular areas and giving them a little bit more love and attention. So for me, for instance, my lower spine is really quite mobile and I'll actually focus on moving less and stabilizing that part of the spine. And my upper spine is a little bit stiffer. So I'm really going to try to express through that part Next time that you come back from a rounded position, let's meet in the center in our neutral spine. On the exhale, we'll take the left ear towards the left hip into our side cat cow, creating a C shape with the spine as you inhale, come back through center, take the right ear to the right hip and find that movement a few more times into that side bend, back through center, and to the second side. The next time that you come back from the right side, let's meet in the middle and we'll see if we can combine those two movements. So as you inhale, arch the spine, open the chest, take the right ear towards the right shoulder and exhale to round the spine up towards the ceiling, left ear to the left shoulder. And again, see if you can smooth out that rotation as you are sort of spinning the spine around the shoulders and hips, 
a few times in this particular direction. And you don't have to keep your shoulders and hips steady at all here, so do feel free to let them move with you. The next time that you come to a rounded position of the spine, we'll meet there. And this time we'll reverse in the opposite direction. So we'll have the left ear, left hip move towards one another. We'll arch the spine and rolling the opposite way here for a few rounds. Noticing if this particular direction is a little bit stiffer, stickier than the other side, or if this is the direction that your spine likes to move in. So again, starting from a place of awareness of what's going on in the body today, right now. And the next time that you come back from an arched position here, we'll again meet in the center. As you inhale, let the right fingertips float up to the ceiling. On the exhale, take the right hand all the way underneath the left arm, reaching the fingertips across, possibly bringing the forearm or the shoulder, possibly the head to the floor into thread the needle. Press down through your left hand to expand the chest, maybe even floating the top arm towards the sky and taking a few rounds of breath to settle in and enjoy the pose, not crunching into the neck in any way that's uncomfortable. Gently top hand comes down in front of your face so that you can press down and unravel. Right hand under its own shoulder, lift the left fingertips up towards the ceiling for the second side. Exhale, take the left arm under the right. Reach the fingertips across, any variation that you prefer, and possibly from there, pressing into the right hand to lift the right shoulder a little bit more actively, or possibly even floating the fingertips towards the ceiling. When you're ready, right hand comes down. Unravel back into your tabletop from here. Reach your left leg back, tuck under the toes and lift the knee. For a moment, really press into the hands to stretch the back of the leg. Shoulders come on top of the wrists. You spin the heel down and lift the left arm up into a supported side plank on the first side. Now, optional to stay here. Possibly you could tuck your right toes under and spin them behind the knee for a bit of extra support. If you want to come deeper, reach the left fingertips forward and spin the pinky finger towards the ground to deepen that stretch along the left side of the body. If you're looking for a bit more of a challenge, then see if you can float the left leg and flex the toes towards your face. Careful of your plant friends if you've got them around you. Now possibly from here, if you want to go for a backbend variation, bend your left knee and see if you can catch the outside of the foot. If that's worked out, press the foot away from you so that you start to stretch and lengthen the front of the body. Finding again, just a few moments here to balance and allow the body to adjust. And gently without flinging the foot around, we softly release and step the left foot forward to the front of our yoga mat. Finding that alignment for our low lunge, making sure that the feet, the front foot and back knee are hip distance apart. We lift up with the hands down by our side. Making sure that the front knee is tracking over the second and third toe. Possibly staying here, you could have the hands on top of your front thigh if you prefer. Otherwise, maybe see if you can lift your back heel towards the sitting bone. If that's happened and you can easily reach your hand, right hand back for the outside of the foot, that's step two. Step three, you could see if you can reach the left hand back for the inside of the foot. And finally, from there, you might be able to bring the heel towards the sitting bone into King Arthur pose. 
And if you want to deepen that, then you have to tuck your tailbone under so that you get a really deep, deep stretch along the front of the body. And hopefully not losing too much of your balance here. I know it's a little bit tricky. Gently again, release that back foot, plant the hands either side of the front foot and step that top knee all the way back. We'll come through a modified vinyasa here. So have the knees hip distance a little bit back from the hips as you exhale to lower all the way down onto the belly. On the inhale, let your shoulders roll back and lift the chest into Cobra Pose. And gently with an exhale, come back via the knees into downward facing dog. Sitting bones are lifting up and back. Of course, in that first downward dog, feel free to take any kind of movement to release the body. Maybe walking through the feet, pedaling the legs or shimming the hips. slowly finding your way back into tabletop for the second side. So from there, reach the right heel back, press into your hands to lengthen the muscles along the back of the right leg. Gently shoulders come back on top of your wrists, spin the right heel down and lift the right arm up into that supported side plank. Possibly spin the left foot behind you for support. Maybe reach the right hand forward with the pinky finger turning down towards the ground. Again, if you're looking for more of a challenge rather than a stretch, float the right leg, flex the right toes towards your face. Find that stability. And if that's worked out and you're going for that back bend, bend the right knee, see if you can easily catch that foot with the top hand and then press the foot away from you to get a little bit deeper into those muscles at the front of the body and really find that expansion. Without letting that top foot ping, release the hand and step the foot forward, allowing the left toes to point to the back of the mat and coming all the way up into a low lunge. Adjust the feet any which way that you need to. Have a quick check again of the front knee going over second and third toe. Again, option one to be here with the hands on top of the thigh if you're going further. See if you can float that back foot towards the heel or towards the sitting bone rather. <laughs> if that's worked out, maybe catch the outer edge of the foot with the left hand, maybe catch the inside of the foot with the right hand. Possibly from there, seeing if you can bring the sitting bones and the sitting bone and heel towards one another. If that has worked, then tucking the tailbone under so that you are sort of tilting your pelvis back getting a little bit deeper into these muscles at the front of the leg, releasing them so that we can find sort of more expressive back bends later in our practice. So it's all about preparing the body in the right ways before we back bend. And then gently release that foot. Again, frame the front of the mat, step the front knee to the back, Possibly find your way into a child's pose if you prefer. You can come through a modified vinyasa or just stay a little bit longer in downward dog. If you prefer, come through a full vinyasa by tucking the toes under and lifting the knees as you exhale, lower down halfway. Inhale into the back bend of your choice and let the exhale take you back to downward facing dog and we'll meet there. Just finding a few rounds of breath in that downward dog. Spinning the inner elbows forward and pressing through index and thumb. Slowly walking or stepping the feet to the front of the mat. Let the feet be as wide as your mat. Grab hold of opposite elbows for a moment and have a little sway side to side. 
possibly switching the elbow that's on top and finding a moment where the spine is releasing the crown of the head towards the floor, possibly nodding the head yes and shaking it no a few times, maybe finding a few circles of the head in each direction to release the neck. On your next inhale, bring the hands to the shins and round through the spine as you come up to standing. Stack one vertebra on top of the other. Allow the shoulders and head to lift last and then give yourself a brief moment for the blood pressure to settle and to find a focal point directly in front of you while I come to face you. So we'll move through a little bit of a qigong warm-up to prepare the body fully for our back bends so make sure that your feet are slightly wider than the shoulders bend your knees enough so that the knees cover at least half of your foot when you're looking down and the hands rest in front of you but give your elbows a little bit of a tug to the side so that you're creating some space between the hands and the torso let the front body soften back so that you're sort of curving in slightly. And we'll move through a sequence that is often referred to as searching for moon in sea. So let the palms float towards the sky and separate the arms wide. Now on an inhale, bring the pinky fingers towards one another in front of your chest. And then curl one fingertip at a time towards your face. Take a breath stroke forward halfway as you exhale to fold all the way to the bed of the ocean and cupping your hands here you're picking up the reflection of the moon pressing into your feet as you inhale to come up to standing and then lifting the moon back into the sky you turn your palms up index fingers point towards the outer edges of your eyebrows and really feel that weight of the moon sinking you into your feet as you exhale, pressing the hands apart for push mountain. Again, as you inhale, hands come towards one another, turning the fingertips in for parting clouds as you dive down into the ocean. Exhale to fold to the floor, picking up reflection of the moon as you inhale to come up to standing, lifting it all the way back up into the sky and sinking down with the weight of the moon as you find your way into push mountain and once you've got the general idea of that movement don't worry too much if you go wrong at any point but see if you can close the eyes and focus a little bit more on your own internal experience of that movement possibly matching it a little bit more accurately with your own breath cycle rather than following mine but of course if you get lost at any point feel free to have a little peek as we float through just a couple more rounds of this movement. And we'll make this our final round. So the next time that you fold all the way back to the bed of the ocean, stay there, we'll meet here. And while I wait for you to arrive, I'll turn back to face forward. From here, optional to find your way into downward dog or possibly child's pose. If you prefer to come through a vinyasa, you might choose to jump back. So hands go under the shoulders, the eyes are forward with soft knees and soft elbows. As you exhale, jump the feet to the back of the mat into your halfway chaturanga point. Inhale to come into the back bend of your choice and exhale to draw the sitting bones up and back into downward facing dog, Ardha Mukha Svanasana. Bring the big toes to touch at the back. Inhale to lift the right leg up and back into three-legged dog. Bend the knee to let the foot dangle behind you for split dog. Let that top hip open, keeping the shoulders square. 
as you exhale draw the right knee towards the chest shoulders on top of the wrists and hover for a moment in tiger's curl gently when you're ready step or shimmy the right foot forward spin the back heel down prepare for warrior two as you inhale to windmill the arms and open it up checking the front knee pressing equally into both feet and reaching through the knuckles the eyes are forward soften the shoulders let the crown of the head lift for your final few rounds of breath here and when you're ready turn your front toes in turn your back toes out so finding horse stance the knees bend very generously toes are pointing towards the outer corners of the mat and we'll find again a slight qigong variation here that is known as throwing the fishing net so it's almost as if you're holding a literal fishing net here the hips are heavy and we'll try to again free the rib cage with this movement and we'll start by taking the arms over to the left side swinging the fishing net over our head really extending the spine and taking it to the right we lean as far forward as we can finding that extension of the back body at the back and reaching forward finding possibly just two more rounds here on our own if you're linking the breath as you exhale you reach forward and inhale to come back finally here when you come back to center release the arms either side turn your back toes in turn sorry turn your back toes out turn your front toes in so you end up in a warrior two at the back of the mat let the right hand come to the back thigh lift the left fingertips back and straighten your left leg into a reverse triangle on the inhale reach the left fingertips as far to the back of the mat as you can let the back of the hand land to the inner thigh possibly the calf or the floor finding triangle pose the right fingertips lift up into trikonasana pressing down through the front big toe pressing into the outer edge of the back foot maybe keeping your chin between the collarbones or lifting it towards the ceiling for your final few rounds of breath here gently bend the front knee as you inhale come back into warrior two at the back of the mat turn both feet parallel to face towards the left edge and from here interlace the hands behind your back lift the chest towards your chin roll the shoulders back and with soft knees as you exhale reach the crown of the head towards the floor possibly with soft elbows let the arms go overhead into your wide legged forward fold allow yourself a few rounds of breath to soften into the pose with each exhale if you wish to of course straighten the legs maybe allow your body weight to travel into the balls of the feet when you're ready to come up bend the knees more generously reach the fingertips back with a straight spine make your way all the way up to standing release the arms and turn all the way to face forward tuck your back toes under and frame the front foot so that you come into a runner's lunge when you're ready possibly stepping back into downward dog or finding your child's pose if you prefer to move through a vinyasa step the front foot back into a high plank exhale to lower halfway for chaturanga dandasana inhale into the back bend of your choice and exhale to find your way back into that downward facing dog adho mukha bring the big toes to touch at the back of the mat inhale to lift the left leg up and back into three-legged dog bend the knee let the hip open into split dog let that left foot dangle behind you keeping the shoulders square to the front of the mat on an exhale draw that left knee forward 
towards the chest, hover in your tiger's curl briefly before you step the foot all the way to the front. Back heel spins down, preparing for warrior two as you inhale the arms, windmill and open up into the pose. Briefly just checking the front knee if you need to, soften the shoulders, reach through the fingertips, maybe let your eyes travel over your front ring finger and finding that softening of the front ribs towards the back body again. Before we slowly turn the front toes in, the back toes out, toes are pointing towards the outer corners and the heels draw in. The hips sink towards the floor as we bend the knees into horse stance and the arms reach overhead. This time throwing the fishing net, we come forward and reach it across to the right side as we extend the spine at the back, traveling to the left, reaching forward as we exhale, inhale overhead. Just three more rounds in your own time. And noticing if this is the slightly stickier direction to move through this movement. The final time that you come up, reach the arms forward and back, turn your left toes in, right toes forward, or rather to the back of the yoga mat, finding warrior two to the back. Let the left hand come to the back thigh, let the front leg straighten as you reach the right fingertips overhead into your reverse triangle pose. As you inhale, reach the right fingers to the back, possibly land the hand to the inner thigh, the calf, ankle or floor. Let the left fingertips lift up and into full Uttahita Trikonasana triangle pose. Remembering to press down through the front big toe and the outer edge of the back foot. That engagement in the legs giving you possibly a little bit more lift through the chest. And then Yogi's choice, either keeping the chin between the collarbones or lifting it towards the top thumb. Final few breaths here. On an inhale, right knee bends, use your arms to come up into warrior two and bring the feet parallel, all 10 toes pointing towards what was originally the right side of the mat. We'll interlace the hands behind us going one pinky finger over for the unusual interlace. As you inhale, roll the shoulders back and lift the chest with soft knees coming all the way forward into Prasarita Padottanasana, our wide-legged forward fold, possibly allowing the arms to come overhead but keeping a gentle bend in the elbows. If you wish to straighten the legs, shift your weight forward into the balls of the feet. Allow the crown of the head to draw towards the ground. So finding that length in the spine, as well as that hamstring stretch if you really want it, but focus a little bit more on the spine if you can. And gently when you're ready, use the arms and the in-breath to come all the way back up to standing. Turn the left toes forward, tuck your right toes under to frame the front foot in a runner's lunge when you're ready. Again, yogi's choice here to either stay, possibly rest in child's pose or step your front foot all the way back into that high plank. Come through a vinyasa if you wish. We'll meet back in downward dog when you're ready. Taking a few rounds of breath here. Gently from there, bringing the big toes to touch at the back. Right leg lifts all the way up as you inhale for three-legged dog, point the toes. Let the foot dangle, find your split dog. Let that hip open. On the exhale, draw the knee into the chest for tiger's curl and hover. Step or shimmy the foot to the front. And again, find a moment in that runner's lunge to open the front of the body, almost an arched position. Plant the left hand underneath its own shoulder, lift the right fingertips up into a simple twist. 
find that extension between the hands as you spread the arms apart. On an exhale, take your top hand back and to the floor. Frame the front foot, find that in-breath as you lengthen the chest forward and roll the shoulders back in runner's lunge, pressing through the back heel. On your next inhale, step the back foot forward into a halfway lift, let the crown of the head reach forward, the hips move back. And exhale to fold all the way down into your legs for Uttanasana, standing forward bend. With soft knees as you inhale, reverse swan dive the arms all the way up to standing, lift through the fingertips. Shift your weight across into the right leg. See if you can float the left foot towards the same side sitting bone. Now from here, bring your right index finger and thumb to touch. Take your left hand to the outside of the foot. With the, knees, the left knee still pointing towards the floor, kick the foot away from you as you lean the chest forward, reaching through your right fingertips, actively pressing into the leg for Natrajasana, Lord of the Dance Pose. Finding just a few moments to breathe and settle in, finding that challenge in the balance, embracing the wobbles in your standing leg, <laughs> and gently, gently lift your right fingertips up and release the leg, but bring the knee in towards your chest. Take the right hand across to the outside of the leg and let the left arm float back into a standing twist variation of Hasta Parangustasana. That sort of slight Sanskrit mouthful, <laughs> which actually just means hand to big toe. Traditionally, that's how it would be performed. And from here, as you inhale, reach both arms up towards the ceiling. Bend your standing leg, let the feet meet into chair pose Utkatasana. On an exhale, fold all the way back into your legs for Uttanasana, standing forward bend. Lengthen the spine halfway as you inhale. Exhale, fold back into the legs. Now, yogi's choice possibly step to downward dog or find your child's pose if you prefer. Again, here you could jump back for a vinyasa, the eyes are forward, the elbows are soft as you exhale, the feet jump all the way to the back of the mat. Elbows are bent when you land. As you inhale, you find that upward facing dog or cobra pose. And on the exhale, making your way back into downward facing dog. From here, the big toes touch at the back. The left leg lifts into three-legged dog, pointing the toes, bend the knee to let the hip open into split dog for a moment. On the exhale, let the knee draw into the chest for tiger's curl, bring the shoulders forward and step or shimmy that foot to the front of the mat. Allow for a moment to press firmly into your back heel. Lift the chest, roll the shoulders back. Find the arched position of your runner's lunge. Right hand underneath its own shoulder, let the left fingertips lift up as you inhale into that simple twist. On the second side, find that extension through the hands, lift the chest towards the ceiling and press your heel away. On an exhale, float that top hand back and down to frame the front foot. Take a moment in your runner's lunge to press the heel away and lift the chest forward. On your next in breath, step the back foot to the front. Into your halfway lift, the crown of the head is reaching towards the horizon line. As you exhale, fold into your legs. With soft knees, Reverse swan dive all the way up to standing as you inhale to Urdhva Hastasana, upward salute. Now shift your body weight into the left leg so that you can bring your index, your left index and thumb to touch. 
See if you can float the right heel towards the sitting bone and catch the outside of the foot with your right hand, possibly coming all the way to the ankle if you prefer. As you kick the right foot back, start to lean forward into the back bend, finding your version of Natrajasana, only coming as far forward as you feel in control of. Keeping the right knee pointing towards the floor and possibly engaging the back of the leg a little bit more if you can here. For your final few rounds of breath, settle into the balance. Embrace the challenge. On an inhale, soften your top leg, lift the left fingertips. As you draw the right knee forward into the chest, let the left hand come to the outside of the knee. Let the right fingertips reach back into that standing twist to release the spine. Find a few moments to really spin the chest open to the right side. Gently as you inhale, both fingertips, sets of fingertips rather, reach towards the ceiling and you soften the standing leg, finding your way into that invisible chair behind you for Utkatasana chair pose. From here as you exhale, fold all the way into your legs. As before yogi's choice, you could already make your way into child's pose, we'll eventually meet there, possibly taking a few breaths in downward dog or finding your way back through vinyasa by jumping as you exhale. Let the inhale take you into the back bend. And on the exhale, find that downward dog before you eventually make your way into balasana, allowing the knees to come down and the big toes to touch. Child's pose. Find a few moments to breathe here, possibly bringing one hand on top of the other, resting the forehead. Making this a more restorative version. Gradually from here, walking the hands in just so that you can slip the feet out from underneath you and make your way onto your backside. Making sure that your feet are hip distance when you arrive, feet flat, knees bent. With the hands down by your side, slowly lift the left leg up towards the ceiling. Take a moment to possibly keep the knee bent or straighten the leg if you prefer to get a little bit of a stretch in there. And then gradually from here, turn the knee towards the left side allow your left ankle to come just below your right knee into what is sometimes referred to as eye of the needle or figure of four pose. Reclined pigeon is another potential name for it. And you could either stay in this variation, just flexing the left toes towards the shin bone or possibly lifting the right knee to bring the foot a little bit closer towards you. Now, if you're still not really feeling anything, then you could thread your left arm between the legs, reach the right arm around and interlace the hands either behind the thigh or all the way in front of your shin bone. Whichever variation you choose, make sure that you are able to keep your shoulder blades relaxing towards the floor, finding a little bit of softness and stillness at the end of our practice here allowing our breath to settle back into its natural rhythm and possibly lingering just a little bit longer at the end of each exhale and the end of each inhale. Gently when you're ready, release the grip of your hands. Keep the legs as they are. Take your arms out wide and bring the right foot to the floor. Now allow your left foot to come all the way down to the ground into a reclined twist. 
You can of course bend the elbows for cactus arms. And if you would like to twist the neck in the opposite direction to the legs, you could possibly take your eyes over towards your left elbow. Again, settling into the pose for a few moments. On an inhale, lift your right knee up to the ceiling, plant the foot to the floor, release your left foot down and swap sides. So let the right leg lift up. Again, feel free to keep the knee bent or for a moment, straighten the leg, working into the hamstrings if you like. And then flex the right toes, turn the knee to the right side as you bring your right ankle just below the left knee, possibly staying here, possibly pressing the right knee forward. If you do want to take this further, draw the knee in towards the chest first. If there's still nothing happening, take the right hand between the legs, left hand to the outside, possibly catch the back of the thigh or the front of the shin bone with your unusual interlace. So again, go one pinky finger over and find that sort of relaxing sensation as the shoulders drop back towards the floor beneath you maybe still pressing the right knee forward while you draw the left knee a little bit closer with each exhale. Gently release the grip of the hands to begin. Either arms in a T-shape, possibly cactus arms. Let the left foot come to the floor. Let the right foot lean over to the left side into that twist. And possibly let your head roll over to the right side if there's no neck issues. Find a few moments of stillness here towards the end of our practice. And gently on an inhale, bring the left foot back to the floor as you lift the knee. Uncross your legs. Draw the knees into the chest and have a little rock side to side to massage the back of the body. Now either reach your right arm back and roll over to the right side of your mat. Take a few rounds of breath. Or if you prefer, the hands go under the knees and take a few rocks through the spine building momentum through the lower legs. Eventually you will meet seated when you're ready. No rush to get there in your own time. Finding any comfortable seat, bringing the palms to touch in front of the chest when you arrive. And using this final moment to plant that sankalpa, that good intention for the rest of your week, month, year, decade, if you're thinking that far ahead. The light in me recognizes the light in you. Namaste, Yogi. So thank you so, so much for joining me in today's practice. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you made it this far, do leave me a comment. 
let me know how it went of course if you don't already then do subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up um, if you wanted to find me anywhere else online all of that information is in the video description and hopefully I will see you back on the map with me very, very shortly. Uh, hope you have a fabulous rest of your day, Yogi. Thank you for joining me.